y'all welcome back my name is Christina and here on this channel I love to talk about the baby whisperer Tracy Hogg today I'm going to give you a little update on my potty training journey with my daughter as I go along Tracy Hogg's methods for starting early potty training at nine months so this is just meant to be a quick update video in my first video that goes through her book the baby whisperer solves all your problems I talk a lot about the potty training chapter since I had already started it at that point and I knew that there's gonna be a big jump coming up since at 16 months Tracy suggests you putting your child in underwear and that was a crazy thing to me at the time <laughs> and made me very nervous but since then we've done a lot I believe I made that first video around 15 months so there was a lot ahead of me that I was getting ready to do so I just wanted to update you all on what I've done and what basically where we're at with our progress and help encourage you if you're also potty training early according to Tracy Hogg's plan or if you're interested in doing her plan what it might look like if you do do it. So right now my daughter is 18 months and about four weeks ago I decided to put her in underwear. So when she was 10 months I started Tracy Hogg's plan. Tracy suggests starting at 9 but I didn't really think my daughter was fully ready plus it was like the Christmas season so we were doing a lot of traveling and I decided to wait until all of the travel was over so she was probably like 10 and a half honestly even closer to 11 months before I actually started and when we did start we just dove straight in so she was still in diapers we cloth diaper so she remained in cloth diapers throughout the day but we put her on the toilet multiple times a day every time after she woke up from sleep or from a nap she'd go on the toilet also after like 20 to 30 minutes after drinking or having a meal she would sit on the toilet if we knew she was going to poop if we could anticipate like her poop face we'd put her on the toilet and then she'd go on one more time before bed and at first it was kind of a accidental thing whenever she would go on the toilet so the, the whole point of it is that it will be an accident the first time that they go on the toilet they won't mean to but you are supposed to applaud and give them a lot of praise for it and then they associate the feeling of pushing and using the bathroom with like oh that's what I'm supposed to do here so they slowly do learn that that is in fact what they're supposed to do on the toilet and my daughter learned pretty quickly it definitely was like for a couple weeks maybe once a day she'd accidentally go mostly misses honestly but after about a month around 11 closer to 12 months it was a very regular thing it was something that she was used to the whole ritual of going to the bathroom at certain times throughout the day and she knew exactly what the toilet was for she would also come to the bathroom when i came to the bathroom as well and she would see me and my husband use the bathroom and so we very much exposed her to the bathroom and the toilet at an early age and so by 15 months when i made my last video about this she was going pretty regularly most of her poop would be in the toilet and not in a diaper unless it was like at night which would always be so unfortunate to wake up to and a good amount of her pee would make it in the toilet as well though I was actually really having a hard time telling when she needed to pee and so she would pee pretty consistently after a nap she even would wake up from a lot of naps dry because she would be holding it through her nap and then she would pee after but I would have a really difficult time telling that 20 to 30 minute window after drinking or eating something when she would pee and I very rarely would catch any of those pees so that was kind of a discouraging thing for me which made me nervous to start putting her in underwear at 16 months and I personally just didn't feel ready at 16 months to do that so I did not I waited we also had a big vacation happen when she was 17 months we were just away from home for two weeks and I knew I didn't want to put her in underwear and then have to go on this vacation and have to deal with everything that comes with potty training on vacation so I decided to wait until after her vacation after our vacation when we got back and so that was four weeks ago my daughter was 17 months probably like 17 and a half months to be more exact but what I started to do at 16 months was every single time we took her to the bathroom we'd always change her diaper afterwards if it was wet 
And so I was con trying to do more diaper changes throughout the day, more consistently. With cloth diapers, it's hard to tell if they've peed or not. There's not like a line that shows you. So I would just guess when she peed and figure it out and try to change her diaper more. And what I noticed right before our vacation was that she was going several hours without peeing in her diaper. And she was actually starting to pee more on the toilet and she was holding her poop like literally waiting for the toilet like we take her out and do things and she never really liked using public toilets and she would hold it and wait to get home and use it and so we were like I think she's ready but then we went on our vacation and of course we were a little loose with things there and when we came back that's when I decided to put her in underwear after we kind of adjusted to being back and recovering from vacation so just talking a little bit about that experience I just bought training underwear which is padded more so I'm going to every single product that I talked about that I'm using I'm going to link down below because I think it's helpful to see what other people do use when they are, are doing toilet training and so we bought training underwear which just has a little extra padding a little extra filling so that if they do pee it doesn't get everywhere if they do pee a full bladder it will get everywhere though that's the thing but if they just pee a little bit it won't but you'll still be able to feel it or see the wetness on the very first day she i don't think she peed in the toilet once it was very very discouraging for me um i think we got her to poop in the toilet because that was already a really consistent thing for her but she peed every single time in her underwear and she was like so confused every single time it happened because she actually felt wet and so that was discouraging for me at first because I thought after a few times she'd catch on she clearly was making some sort of connection in her mind of like oh when I pee in my diaper I don't feel this but now I'm peeing in underwear and I'm feeling it and I didn't know how quickly she'd catch on, but actually the next day, the second day, she had a huge improvement where she probably only had two or three accidents and actually started peeing in the toilet more regularly and like learning how to actually hold it. I knew she could hold it, so that was one thing. Um, and she figured out like, oh, I need to hold it now. So she started holding it and that was really encouraging for me because after that first day, I just, I didn't know if I, started too soon or anything and what Tracy Hogg says is usually from the moment you put them in underwear you should expect that within two months they'll be potty trained during the day so her whole thing was like you start at 16 months and then by 18 months they're fully potty trained during the daytime and then nighttime dryness comes naturally later so I wasn't sure because I was starting closer to 18 months if it would be faster for her to pick up or if it still will take two months I have no idea how long it will take uh, right now I'm at four weeks and for the last four weeks there's only been two days where she's had zero accidents and that was actually this last weekend it was like a Saturday and Sunday which surprised me as well because usually on Saturdays and Sundays I actually feel like I'm less attentive to taking her to the bathroom and she did really well and She's had a couple accidents every day since, unfortunately, but most days when she does have accidents, it's usually like three or less, and she goes to the toilet most of the time. She also has been pooping every single day in the toilet as well. She hasn't pooped in her underwear at all. That's been great, and I've been noticing too, now she just has one nap that most of her naps, she wakes up dry from that nap as well. So we only use a diaper at night, and it's really great because that's like the one diaper that we use. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm hoping to give you guys an update once we actually hit the two month mark of doing this to see maybe she will actually be potty trained at that point or really close. One thing that I personally am trying my best is to not rush her and to not have a timeline. I am 30 weeks pregnant right now, and so I'd love it if she was fully daytime potty trained by the time that I'm due in November. So that's kind of a goal in my head, but I'm really not trying to push her because that's going to be a huge transition period. And I want to expect a little regression there too, because she's going to have a lot of adjusting to do 
I also just wanted to bring up the idea of progress. If you're also potty training, whether you're doing Tracy Hogg's plan, if you're doing it a little later, a little earlier than me, or if you're just doing another plan and you just are having a difficult time with your child and you're feeling discouraged because it's taking longer than you thought, I've been thinking about the concept of progress and I think with potty training we really consider it to be just like if they're having accidents or not and having no accidents shows us that we're progressing and that they're getting there and having accidents means they might be regressing and so I think that's not exactly how we need to think of it. Every single time my daughter has an accident she learns what happens essentially. So every time she pees in her underwear, whether it's a full bladder or just a little bit of pee, she'll feel the wetness and she'll make the neural connection that she peed herself and that she's uncomfortable. And the goal is hopefully then she'll do something about it. Maybe, you know, if she starts to pee a little, she can stop. There are some times where she'll pee a little bit and then she'll tell me she has to go to the bathroom and then we'll go and she'll finish peeing in the toilet and that's encouraging to me even though she did pee a little before she was able to recognize that she needed to go to the toilet but there's other times that she just lets a whole full bladder loose and she doesn't say anything at all and i notice a few minutes later and i'm like come on like you know you just peed yourself <laughs> and so it's like you have to be gracious because you shouldn't be negative i think it's really important to be very positive when you are potty training and to not focus too much on accidents because there is a lot going on in their brain as they are learning slowly this whole new thing that they have to do. So I've been trying not to put pressure on myself to be showing progress, but it is really difficult, especially when we just had two days in a row with no accidents and we've gone back to a couple of accidents a day since then that I'm, I know what she's capable of doing and she doesn't always do it. And that's okay because eventually she will always do it and it'll become more normal. But just like with every other skill that our children learn, they have to practice and they'll mess up and they'll fall and they'll fail, but slowly over time, they'll get it. Just really quickly, if you are interested in also doing Tracy Hawk's potty training method, whether you're starting at nine months or 10 months or 12 months or 16 months or 18 months, there are a lot of products that you might need. So I'm just gonna go over the products that I have. We have a two-story house and we do have a half bathroom downstairs and we have two bathrooms upstairs. The bathroom that's upstairs that is my daughter's bathroom is totally transformed basically to be just for kids and for babies. And our half bathroom, I've had to do the same just so I don't have to walk up and down the stairs all the time and get her to the toilet really far away if I'm downstairs in the kitchen because we do spend most of our day downstairs. So we kind of have two sets of everything, one in each bathroom. We have a toilet seat reducer. That's the first thing that you want to start with, especially if you are starting with a younger child. You basically just need the toilet seat reducer and you want to find one that has a pretty small hole because when I was shopping on Amazon for it, literally like all of them had these huge holes that I was like, I think this might be the size of my daughter's body and I don't want her to feel like she's going to fall in. So that, I mean, that's never been a concern with my daughter, which is great. So I think I found a really good seat um, that is also linked down below. Then you want to have some sort of footrest. In the book, Tracy Hogg talks about having a footrest that your child can put their feet on while they're sitting on the toilet. I could not find anything high enough that my daughter could ever touch her feet to on the toilet. But my daughter never minded having her feet dangle. She never felt unsafe in that way. In fact, I swear when I first started putting her on the toilet, her feet almost like rested on the toilet seat. And she's not short either. She's like 75th percentile for height. She's got really long legs, but she cannot reach anything still with her feet at 18 months. So we do have these stools that are the highest ones that I could find. We mostly use them at the sink for hand washing, but as soon as she can actually like use them, for the toilet i think i'll teach her that because she also can't get up to the toilet independently right now if you're just starting off like you don't really need to give them a foot rest unless you want to or unless that's something that you know that they will like and you might need to innovate a little because i didn't figure out that problem at all 
Then we also, for hand washing, we got an automatic soap dispenser so that my daughter doesn't have to learn how to like pump soap. And it's a soap dispenser. It's, it's really fun. It's a duck. We got two, one for each bathroom. And she loves them. She thinks it's so much fun to wash her hands and see the duck. And it's really great because it also is foaming so she can see the soap. And so even if you don't do an automatic hand dispenser, I really suggest using foaming soap because like it makes sense more in their brain to like you get the soap on your hand and then you wash the soap off. And if you can see the soap, that's very helpful. And then upstairs in our bathroom, the sink, the faucet didn't really extend enough for her to be able to reach the water with her hands. So we bought like a, I don't even know what it's called, like a sink extender thing that just runs the water closer to her so she can actually reach it and wash her hands on her own and I'll have to lift her up <laughs> and the whole uh hand washing thing we actually didn't start doing until recently I would try to wash her hands after she'd used the bathroom before she was in underwear and I would have to just like hold her because she, she was too short even on her stool to reach the sink and I'd have to hold her and it hurt my back and she didn't get it and I didn't want to do it and I was the one wiping her anyway so I was like what's the point. So that's not something that I started doing until I actually put her in underwear. So if you are just starting off you really don't have to integrate the hand washing yet but you could like you should wash your hands after she uses the bathroom and like maybe explain that you're washing your hands and that that's what you do and eventually she'll wash her hands. It's really up to you on there. <laughs> Alright and that comes to the end of this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. If you're doing the same thing or if you're interested in starting this potty training method, I would love to hear from you. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that so you can stay updated when more videos come out, like when I do update you all in a month or so about how potty training's been going for two months. So that will be very interesting. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up as well. Thanks for watching.